a story, an incident that occurred in the Prophet's life والسلام, and these four ayat are dedicated to this one conversation that the Prophet والسلام, had with a woman who's otherwise not very famous at all. Her name was Khawla radiallahu anha. She had a problem with her husband and she wanted to discuss this problem with the Prophet والسلام, but because of this conversation and she was complaining about something and the Prophet والسلام, did not have an answer for her question and he, Allah had not revealed an answer to him yet. Instead of complaining to the Prophet والسلام, after arguing with him, she she complained to Allah and Allah revealed Quran because of her. And years later, after the Prophet ﷺ had passed away, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, who was the head of state, you can think of it in today's terms, he was the president. And he was traveling with an entourage and they have of course a short deadline, they have to get somewhere. So Umar bin al-Khattab was meeting with a bunch of delegates from different parts and Quraysh etc. And she was passing down the street and she said, Ya Umar, she just called him, Umar. And Umar radiallahu anhu stopped the caravan, stopped the entourage and the, you know, the official government trip. He got off his horse, he went down and he started talking to her. And she starts yelling at him. And she says to him, I knew you when they used to call you Umair. Umair means little Umar. She goes, I remember you since you were little. And then she's giving him like, you should fear Allah. Now you're a big shot, huh? Now you're head of state. You're the Amir al-Mu'mineen. Look at you now. Always fear Allah. Always remember Allah. And she talks to him for a good hour. She's giving him a lecture on the street right there. And all his crew, his security, all the other ambassadors that are waiting, they're just standing there waiting until he's done. And he doesn't say a word. He just, she just, and when she's done, then she leaves and then he says, we can go. And some of his staff came to him and said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, head of the believers, you know, ma ra'ayna mithla al we haven't seen a day like this one. I've never seen something like this. What, you stop all of this, all of these VIPs, bil ajuz, this old lady, that's why you stop? And he said, this woman, when she complained, her complaint was heard above seven heavens. And Allah revealed Quran for this woman. If she talked to me all night, I would have been standing here. And if she kept me the next day, I would have been standing here. The only time I would have left is if she gave me the excuse to go pray. So I would have, that's the only time I would have left. But otherwise, how am I not going to listen to someone who is heard above the seven heavens? And Quran comes down for her. Anyhow, she comes to the Prophet ﷺ complaining. And when she talks to him, she says a bunch of things. She says a bunch of things about her husband. She says, he's an old man, he doesn't have good manners. I used to be able to, and she's younger than him, but she's not that young. Right? So she says, I used to be able to have children, but now that I can't have kids anymore, he thinks I'm worthless and he treats me like a servant. And she even goes on to say, in another narration of the, of the same story, I used to be young and a lot of guys, a lot of men wanted to marry me, but I chose him. And look at how he treats me. And today he came home, he was upset, and I, you know, I responded to him. And when I answered back, I, you know, he gave me some sharp comment, I gave him a sharper comment back. Some of you married men know what that's like. And he got so upset, he said to me, from today on, you are like my mother. And this was in Arab tradition before Islam, this was called dhihar. And dhihar was this ugly practice where when you're really mad at your wife, you say, from today, I swear you're like my mom. And that means I will never have any kind of relationship with you again because I, I think of you like my mother now. So he said that to her and then he left. He, he left the house and he went and she says he was with his friends for an hour or whatever. And then he came back and he wanted to come close to me and I said, no, you're not coming close to me until Allah and his messenger make a decision because you said what you said. You know, you said, I'm not going to let you touch me ever again until I talk to the Prophet So she comes to the Prophet and she says, that's what he said. What should we do? And the Prophet first said, I have no revelation to answer this. Quran talks about divorce. It doesn't talk about from today, you're my mother. It doesn't address that problem. Not yet anyway. So the Prophet doesn't have an answer for her. But based on what the Prophet can tell, he on his own opinion said to this woman, from as far as I can see, harumti alayhi. You become haram for him. You, you can no longer be with him. But I'm not, I don't say I know the answer, but this is just my opinion. And she says, Ma qala talaqan. She said, but he didn't say divorce. So she starts arguing back with the Prophet and the, well, the witnesses to this account say that she was going back and forth and she was actually getting more and more upset with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, but no, he didn't pronounce divorce. I don't understand this answer. And then she got so, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't have an answer that she wanted, and she, she tried to explain to him, we have children. And then she says that if I leave these children with him, da'u, they're gonna die. He doesn't know how to take care of kids. He's horrible with children. He's got a temper with me, but he's also horrible with children. He can't take care of them. And if I can't ever be with him again, and the kids are in the house, these kids are as good as dead. And then she says, but if I keep the children with me, ja'u, they're gonna starve to death. I don't have a means to provide for them. We can't break this family. 
This is the problem she presents to the Prophet ﷺ. And he doesn't have an answer. A point came where she got so frustrated with the Prophet ﷺ, she put her hands and head in the sky and she said, Ya Allah, put some words in your Prophet's mouth because he doesn't have an answer for me. And Allah revealed this and the Prophet started speaking, started reciting this Qur'an. Allah opens by saying, Qad Allahu tujadiluka fi zawjiha. Allah has been listening, has already heard the word of the woman who comes and argues with you about her husband. And she's coming, turning to Allah, wa tashtaki ila Allah. And she's taking her complaint to Allah. Wallahu yasma'u tahawurakuma. And Allah is, has been listening all along to the dialogue the two of you are having. Inna Allah has sami'un basir. Certainly Allah is all hearing and the one who sees. Now, the first lesson we learn here from Allah Himself is that when someone is in trouble and when someone is in a desperate situation and they come to you asking for help, even if they're raising their voice or they're debating with you because they're in a terrible situation, you're not supposed to get upset. How dare do you speak to me this way? Show some respect. You have to overlook the raising of the voice. You have to overlook the, the tone and you have to be sympathetic to the pain. And the difficulty that they're in, Allah overlooked the fact that she's debating with His own Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now Allah's response, He says, Those of you that are going to say such a thing to their women, to their wives, if you ever say something like that, you're like my mother. First thing Allah says, They're not their moms, they are not their mothers. In ummahatuhum illa their mothers are the ones that gave them birth. Now that's not rocket science. Everybody already knows that's your mom, the one who gave you birth. And the people who said it also knew that. But the fact that Allah went out of His way to say, by the way, those of you who say such nonsense, that it makes no sense, number one. And first of all, you already have a mother, the one who gave you birth. This is Allah's way of scolding, not the woman, but the men who said something arrogant. Because they felt, I'm in a bad mood, I'm just gonna say what I'm gonna say. And then he didn't stop there. He says, وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَقُولُونَ مُنْكَرًا مِّنَ الْقَوْلِ وَزُورَ And they are saying something vile, something disgusting. And this is false testimony. How dare you use the word mother that way? Now I don't have to make a list. Virtually in every culture in the world, the devil has made, the devil knows. Shaitan is the same shaitan. The shaitan speaks Japanese, and the shaitan speaks Punjabi, and the shaitan speaks English. It's the same shaitan. The, 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 the food can be different, and the cultures can be different. The devil's the same. And the devil knows that Allah made the womb sacred. This is why you find in virtually every language, one of the most abused words is mother. And by the way, the one who doesn't have regard for the womb of the mother has no regard for Allah. This relationship between husband and wife is also sacred. Just like motherhood is sacred, marriage is also sacred. And marriage is something Allah calls mithaqan ghalila, a heavy contract. So then after Allah says, okay, those of you who have done this, and ثُمَّ يَعُودُونَ لِمَا قَالُوا And they want to go back from what they said. فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ You have to free a slave. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَتَمَاسَ Before they can touch each other. ذَلِكُمْ تُعَذُونَ بِهِ That's the advice you're being given. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا Allah knows what you're up to. Then He says, and فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ And whoever can't do that, they have to fast. Listen to this carefully now. That man has to fast 60, 60 consecutive days, two consecutive months before they can touch each other. And then he says, and whoever can't do that, just like in any other sharia, parts of sharia, when you miss a fast, then you can make it up by feeding somebody. So you have to feed 60 people. By the way, in that story, when, he, when the ayat came down, the lady didn't stop. Khawla said, he doesn't have money to free a slave. And he said, well, he could fast for 60 days. And she said, we, he can't even do one day. When he misses one meal, he starts going blind. So he can't do it. And then she, she, she said, okay, well, he can feed 60. And she said, we don't know. He doesn't have food to give. We barely have food ourselves. Who's he going to give to? So the Prophet ﷺ then brought a basket of dates and said, here, go give it to 60 people. And the, the leftovers, take them home. That's what he did for her, you know, to save her family. This man and this woman could have just had this argument and a couple of hours later he wanted to be with her, yes? Like let's, let's pretend it never happened. You can do that. You can do that until judgment day. But Allah will remind you that these words that you said are not light. Verbal abuse inside of a family is not light. Saying these things that are absolutely haram to say, Allah doesn't forget. Allah will hold to account. And Allah's verdict on especially taking family relationships and making verbal abuse okay inside family relationships is very harsh. The Prophet ﷺ says, the best of you are the best to your families. Most of us are the worst to our families. We're the best to everybody else. Worst to our own spouses. Husbands to wives, wives to husbands. This is not a small thing. We have to be careful about the things we say and do.